is Vivek Hemka. How many of you here like listening to stories from me? Yes. Oh, wonderful. So let me tell you a story of Vijay. <laughs> Vijay is a young boy who hails from a village and he's come to city for the first time. He's mesmerized looking at the high-rise buildings, the beautiful bungalows of the city. He's standing outside one of those beautiful bungalows and suddenly the owner comes out and insults him. Vijay becomes furious and he take, takes a pledge. One day I'll buy this house. He starts working day and night, saving each and every penny he's earning in big earthen piggy banks. And uh, he also inquired the price of the bungalow. The uh, price of the bungalow was 7 crore rupees. So he started saving each and every penny in that piggy bank, that huge earthen piggy bank. And after six years, when he thought that he had, he had saved enough money to buy that bungalow, to, to buy that bungalow, he broke that piggy bank, took all the money in the sacks uh, on a wooden cart, went outside that bungalow and without any veneration, shouted at the <laughs> owner to come out and say with full attitude, hey, here's your 7 crore rupees, I'm buying this bungalow. <laughs> to what this owner replied, even your ears will fall off. He said, 7 crores? The price today is 10 crore rupees. Vijay was devastated. He felt his six years of life went in vain. He did not know what just happened. He actually missed on one very important concept which we will talk about. Good evening guests and Toastmasters. Let's talk about money today. We all know what money is and why we need money in our life. But can anyone tell me why we need to save money? Can anyone tell me? For the uncertainties in future. Exactly. Based on, uh, based on an independent survey, the top reasons why people in India save money are to have money for any future uh, adversities, uh, they save money to have a better secured life, people save money for any uh, financial goal like buying their own house or for the children's education or for child marriage or uh, just to have a, a safe and secure life. The second question that comes into our mind is how much money should we save? Well, uh, the amount of money that we save depends upon, uh, sh should be such that we do not compromise on our current lifestyle. At the same time, we are moving towards our financial goal one brick at a time. Based on a report by CEIC, which is, an, uh, which is a global uh, survey company, an average Indian saves uh, around 21% of their monthly earnings. The next question that will come into our mind is where should we keep the money that we have saved? Well, this depends upon the purpose for which we are saving because with that we can know the time which we have for keeping the money, the uh, degree of liquidity that is required and also the amount of risk that we can take. Also, we should ensure that our money is not eroded by inflation. As per the data released by Ministry of Statistics, and program implementation. The average inflation in India is around 6%, which means that if our saving is not growing by 6%, it is actually depreciating. And this is where our hero, Vijay, got trapped into. So uh, when we talk about where we should keep the money, the various avenues that we have are we can either keep all the money in cash, we can keep it, keep it in bank, or we can give it as loan to someone or we can invest it. The wiser decision is to have a mix of all, not to lay all the eggs in the same basket. Because we have to ensure the liquidity, we have also have to ensure the returns. If we keep the money in uh, either in bank or in cash, we can ensure liquidity, but we cannot ensure the return, we cannot beat the inflation. So we have to have a mix of all. The other avenues uh, that, uh, that are available are real estate, uh, share market, mutual funds, post offices, cryptocurrencies, gold. But we need to consider, we need to ascertain the amount of risk that is associated with all of these. And we also need, also need to take into consideration the taxation angle of the investment and also of the returns. When we were in school, compound interest would mean P into 1 plus R by 100 to the power N. Right? But when we talk it in the terms of investment, it has got an all different meaning. Uh, Trisha, tell me, if you are investing 10,000 rupees every month, for 20 years, how many, how much money would you invest? 
24 lakhs, correct? But if it is growing at an uh, annualized rate of uh, compounded rate of return of 12%, do you know how much amount will it come up to? It will be 1 crore rupees. And if the period is expanded by 5 years for 25 years, the total investment will be 30 lakhs, while the uh, value of investment will be 1 crore 70 lakhs. Uh, that's the power of compounding. Longer the period, higher the returns. When we talk about compound interest, uh, there's a formula for uh, there, there's a form there's a thumb rule to uh, calculate in how much time your money will double. It's called the rule of 72. Divide 72 by the compounded rate of uh, compounded annual rate of interest, and you'll know the time it will uh, your money will double. Suppose uh, if someone is offering you uh, an annual ret compounded return of 12 percent, it means your money will double in 72 by 12 six six years. If someone uh, offers you to double your money in four years, that means uh, they are offering you a compound rate of return of 18%. If someone says your money will double in 25 days, be careful, it can be your era very. <laughs> Based on a, a data uh, released by the Reserve Bank of India, uh, top, the top avenues where Indians are investing is real estate which accounts for 77% of the savings followed by uh, gold which is 11% and financial assets which is at 5%. When we talk of financial assets, uh, the country's favourite is fixed deposits which is around, uh, which is accounting for around 151 lakh crore rupees. And also there is mutual funds which is growing at a faster pace with 38 lakh crores presently. Now are you inter uh, willing to know whether Vijay was able to buy that house? Yes. yes. Well, uh, Vijay met an investment advisor. He invested all of that 7 crore in a mutual fund which is giving 12% return. He started an SIP of 1 lakh rupees. At the end of 6 years he had 15 crore rupees which, with which he was able to beat inflation and finally bought that house. So I'd just like to conclude by saying that, my dear friends, money wise, be wise. Because life will give us surprise. But with proper planning and with smart actions, we can reach skies. Thank you.